On this episode of Resi Week, feeling unsafe in the office, Zoomification opportunities, and Cedia in person training. All this and more on this episode of Resi Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is Resi Week, episode 260, Never Coming Back. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Draper, focused on innovative solutions. Welcome to this episode of Resi Week. This is your weekly roundup of all the latest news and stories for the residential AV industry. I'm your host, Matt D. Scott for avnation.tv. And this week, I'm pleased to be joined by two of my good friends. First, we have Mr. Ken Eagle. He is the senior Global Director of Training for Athlona. How are you doing, Ken? Good to see you, Matt. Doing well, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully uh, your backswing didn't throw you off too much. For oh, no, no, I'm a little sore, but I'm good. Uh, yeah, it must be rough. <laughs> rough golfing in January. Mm. Then we have Jeremy Glowacki. He is the Executive Editor at Residential Tech Today. How are you doing, Jeremy? Doing well, Matt. Hey, it's great to be on with Ken again. I, uh, I was on last time with Ken. I think we're becoming like partners in crime here we're grouping you guys together now i know it's nice. the it's the hairstyle i think <laughs> i didn't be. want to mention it but yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right gentlemen let's kick this off uh there has been some some cool things going around recently uh if you've missed it um cedia their their board has sat uh the executive committee and uh some new elected directors who are serving this term uh, mainly Shannon Bush, Eddie Sapiro, and Michael Sherman, uh, as well as uh, Albert, who is um, voted back in as well. Uh, so that's very cool. Congratulations to them. Let's, uh, let's kick this off with a couple of cool stories, mainly focusing around the workplace. Uh, this comes to us from CE Pro. A study by Honeywell has found that over 70% of the U.S. workforce does not feel completely safe working in their employees' build buildings. This number stretches beyond 80% for those who are currently working remotely. Yeah, so that says that like 20% of the U.S. feels comfortable working in their office. Ken, let me, let me start with you on this. This is, and I'd love to see, the skeptic in me would love to see how this question was worded, how this was phrased in this study, because I while not trying to diminish anyone's fear of, of going to work, um, I do wonder the level of, of fear versus we really enjoy just working from home. I, I, I wonder what the balance is, but what, is this, what does this look like for, gosh, everyone as far as the, the, the conversations that this summer life will kind of get back to normal and we will get back to work as normal. What is our time frame actually going to look like uh, for, for most people getting back yeah. into that office setting? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question to answer. I mean, it's going to depend on, you know, a number of variables at the, um, at a much higher level, a countrywide level, you know, number of vaccinations we get. Um, I know in our conversation earlier, we were chatting a little bit. It's very difficult to get back into the office without knowing the status of vaccinations, right? If anybody has been vaccinated, if you haven't been vaccinated, um, personally, <laughs> I mean, I think most people would feel this way. If I had the vaccination, I'd feel a lot better about going into work. <laughs> but uh, other people who might be in there, you know, they may not uh, have the vaccination, may not feel good. I think we're a little ways out, honestly, Matt. And, um, you know, um, a couple of thoughts here. Number one, it's, it's really difficult to get back into the building uh, when you don't know the status of each person coming in and where they're going, where they're coming in and out. Here's what I mean. You've got a contingency of people in the office. Every company does. We're not 100% from home. You have some essential jobs that are in the office. Those people have been there for the last you know, eight, 10 months still doing their work. You have to be very careful how we bring people back in and not upset that business environment that's already running and working and continuing to make us money and, and keep the business moving forward. Uh, we can't risk getting, getting those people sick with other employees coming in. Likewise, 
holding meetings or trainings and bringing out people outside the organization. And even if my company goes back 100%, everyone's in there, it becomes difficult to bring in outside people and risk, again, my employees. Uh, if I risk my employees, not only do I risk their safety and health, but I risk their kind of contribution to the business by them being out sick and, and not being there. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a slow approach possibly even a phased approach. Like I said, you've got essential employees in there right now. Maybe there's a phase two essential employee, a phase three essential employee until you can safely bring them back in. I just don't see us turning on the spigot and everybody goes back in one shot. That's too much. And I think you're on to something else there too. As you mentioned, um, when do people uh, decide they want to go back versus they just enjoy working at home more? Uh, you know, for a long time, we didn't let people work at home because we didn't know. Now they have to be at home and we've seen business continue. So some people are going to choose to not want to go back. So I think that's a bridge that's got to be crossed in some areas too. I've always worked remote. Our com corporate office is in California at Lona's in San Jose, California. Uh, you know, there's no plans for me to be able to travel to California because that's still a risk too, to be able to make that commute. So there's, there's a risk in, in that uh, piece as well. And obviously this is a, a much bigger, when you get into that, that, that requirement to work in the office conversation, that, that is a massive conversation and every company will have to deal with that independently. Jeremy, one of the, arguably one of the most interesting aspects of this article uh, to me was that last paragraph when they talk about uh, the top health and safety measures that surveyed workers want to see including temperature checks, cleaning procedures, quality updated air quality systems, touchless door entries, and technology for contract tracing. When you look at, you know, the majority of office spaces or office buildings that you've, been, heck, just toured, been to, manufacturers, um, that takes a, a massive investment to just go to, you know, automated door systems. That is not, you know, $1,000 a door. That could be significantly higher. Uh, you start talking air quality systems and everything from UV filters all the way up to, you know, completely rebuilt HVAC systems. That is a massive investment. At what point will that, will that be phased as well? Will that be something where, those will be the, the specific drivers that push back to work? I think, you know, when they answer that question, it's kind of an ideal world. And the reality of that is probably a lot less. But I think that there, if you're a business owner and you want to bring people back in at some point, you, th you think about what is a healthier work environment in general. And you can do that in different Le levels. I mean, you can have hand san sanitizer stations throughout the place. That's a very basic thing. Promoting, you know, that kind of a sanitary, sanitary kind of environment. Um, I do think ventilation is important. Maybe that just means changing the filters on a more regular basis, really being on top of that stuff. And maybe it's about the airflow being a little higher than usual or than in the past. Um, I don't know about changing outdoors and making them touchless. I think people are just going to be more conscious of all of these things, at least for a while. And then people will get back to what, what they were maybe at some point down the road where they start to forget, you know, think about how many viruses we were fending off and getting sick from before a ma the, the coronavirus, which is so much more fatal, you know, and, and serious but just sharing spaces. And now I, I think we, we, we don't want to even come near something like that. You know, we've kind of all put up our guards, at least those of us who care for our health, you know? Um, and so you go into an, to a room where you, you don't know where someone's been, you don't know if they've, they've had a um, vaccination, that, that type of thing. And it's rough. The thing that our industry is interesting, it, it, our, our, folks have been in the field, the integrators have been in the field the entire time, going to homes and learning how to be um, safe and how to um, respect their clients' spaces and that sort of thing. So th that part of uh, our world is, is, is much more pro progressed and 
you know, ahead of the curve on, on a lot of this, but it is that shared space. Most owners are not in the office. Most owners are, are remote um, managing things. There aren't meetings in offices that often anymore. Um, people aren't using their showrooms, I don't think anymore. Um, and so when, when it comes down to returning, I just think that you're gonna maybe limit the number of people you're going to probably stick with masks for a while. I don't think that's going to change even after vaccinations happen. They say that really best practices are to keep the mask going for a little while longer. Um, so there are just going to be a lot of different habits and best practices, I think, that maybe aren't as expensive, but are just smart and yeah. keeping kind of current trends going right now. Hey, thanks for watching the first segment of this week's episode. To catch the entire show, please click the link below or visit avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv.